we are going to stand and open up with Everby. Will you please join me in our call to worship and prayer of the day? And this will be read responsively. I will read the parts that are in light print and you will respond with what is in bold. Our God, may you be gracious to us and bless us and make your face to shine upon us that your way may be known to all the earth, your saving power among all the nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. 
for you judge the people with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God shall bless us. Let all of the ends of the earth fear him. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Gracious and wonderful God, we come here to join all creation in joining to sing your praise and your glory and your honor. Father, we ask that you would bless us here today as we come and to celebrate all the wonderful things that you have done for us, Lord, and all the wonderful things, Lord, that you are to us. Father, bless this time that we have together. Bless this time that we have in your presence. And may your praise ever be on our lips. And all God's people said, Amen. We are going to remain standing and sing hymn number 455, All Creatures of Our God and King. seated. Good morning. morning. It's great to see all of you here in the house of our King and our God on this the day that the Lord has made. Let us truly rejoice and be glad in it. Glad to see all the shining and beautiful faces here on this cold winter morning. And I'm just always reminded uh, it's always warm in here, always warm in the hair in the house of our God surrounding by our fellow saints and fellow believers. Um, I'm glad all of you decided here to join us today, whether you're here in person with us or you're watching um, online, live, or recorded a little bit later in the day or in the week. Um, We're glad you decided to worship with us here at Cherokee. Um, If you're a visitor, um, or actually if you're just here, anyone in present, in person, you need to follow along with the service. Everything that you need to know and to say and to sing with us is printed right here in your bulletin. Um, If you're watching, you can download that bulletin from the comments section on Facebook, or you can just wait for the words to appear on the screen at the appropriate time. Uh, There are a few announcements I would like to bring to your attention, and you can see all of these announcements um, that are written in the the insert in our bulletin today. Um, I want to bring attention to a few small groups that are going to be meeting this week. Um, Our youth small group is going to be meeting tonight here at the church at 5 o'clock. 
That is for all middle and high school youth. Um, Five o'clock here at the church today, we encourage you to attend and if possible, maybe even bring a friend. Um, Theology on Tap discussion group is going to continue to meet this week. That's going to be Monday at seven o'clock at the Crafty Draft Brew Pub. And we are going to be beginning our discussion on difficult verses in the Bible. So we invite you to join us, 7 o'clock at Crafty Draft tomorrow night, and uh, for good fellowship and always a very spirited discussion. Uh, we also have a women's meeting that's going to be happening uh, this week at Susan DeBose's at 7 o'clock. Is that correct? Thursday at 7 o'clock, Susan DeBose's. All women are invited and encouraged and welcome to join. Is there anything else they need to know or... All right, good. Discussing a service project. So bring them some good ideas and a heart to serve. And um, over to Susan's at 7 o'clock on Thursday. Uh, We also have our Valentine's dinner that is going to be this Saturday coming up on the 12th of February. That's going to be at the Canning, was it the Canning Factory? What do they call it, though? Canning Station. Canning Station. That's what it is. Canning Station just down the road here. It's going to be Saturday at 530. Uh, Tickets are $18 a person, 36 a couple. It's our Valentine's dinner, but it is not just for couples. It's for everybody that has love in their heart. So uh, we invite you to join us and to be with the people that love you and the people whom you love. All the money that we're going to be raising is going to go toward the youth mission trip. Um, One other thing about that, if you decide to come, tea and lemonade are going to be offered, or just tea. Tea and water are going to be offered. If there is another drink, perhaps, that you would like to drink along with your meal, you are welcome to bring that also. So, But you've got to bring it yourself. Um, Liz will be outside after church today um, to take your your ticket orders, or you can contact her. And uh, before that happens, though, we do have a congregational meeting, a brief congregational meeting after church, and a little celebration that we're going to have. We've got some cupcakes, some coffee, and some lemonade uh, to celebrate the great accomplishment that we have accomplished. I'm not going to ruin it for you right now. We'll announce that at the congregational meeting. Uh, We do ask you to stay for that, but if you can't, Please grab a cupcake on your way out. Uh, with no more announcements, um, we're going to get ask the kids to come forward so they can watch a skit that our youth group is going to perform for them. So, kids, if you want to sit there on that front row, and you're about to be dazzled and entertained. Once upon a time, in the distant land of Gilbert, there were three people named Peter, James, and John, and they were living the the dream. You see, they had tickets to the Super Bowl, and the tickets were on the 50-yard line. You can't imagine how excited these three men were. They were downright rowdy with enthusiasm. (laughs) They they started punching each other in the arm in a manly way. (laughs) They did the wave and back the other way. Then they, went the, then they did the wave five times in a row really fast. <laughs> then they noticed a camera on them and they talked to it. <laughs> and then they stopped to pray for the team that they knew was going to win. Now Peter, James, and John had paid dearly for their seats. In fact, they had given up all they had to be there, with the exception of just a dollar apiece so they could share a super small Coke. They took their money and kissed it and stuck it in their pockets so they could use it at halftime. Meanwhile, the game was about to start. Peter, James, and John went completely wild. One of them played the air guitar, while the other two did some wild headbanging. After being so rowdy, they became very tired and sat down. And just then, an amazing thing happened. They just blinked their eyes for a second, and suddenly, Supercan appeared before them. (laughs) 
surrounded by a brilliant light. Her face shone like the sun, and when she smiled, her teeth were a dazzling white, and she said, Peter, James, and John, there are hungry people in the world. The three replied, What is that to us? We don't have anything to give them. We only have a dollar apiece. Superkin replied, If all who are watching this game would just give one dollar, we would have... $128 million to share with hungry people. Millions of hungry people would be fed. So, you start. You give them something to eat. And all of a sudden, the Rams quarterback and the Bengals quarterback appeared beside Supercan. And together they said, Supercan, you the men. Here's our dough. Now help it grow. They dropped their dollars in Supercan's pot. And then they pointed to Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John, realizing now that what they could make that they could make a difference, dropped their Coke money in Supercan's pot. And all the fans at the Super Bowl cheered. <laughs> and Supercan turned to the crowd and said, Now go and do likewise. Next week, you will have the opportunity to go and do likewise. The youth will have their super soup pots to collect any money and canned goods you would like to donate to support our local hunger efforts through Gilbert Food Pantry and the Backpack Program. And as an added bonus, please stay after worship for a cup of soup and some fellowship. Oh, don't do that. Just kidding. Just oh. that Not that last part. <laughs> Wonderful actors. Yeah, kids, y'all can go on back with Bailey. And yes, we, uh, at our church, we don't do soup. We do cupcakes instead. So that's how we roll here. <laughs> Friends, there's an old saying that says, to err is human and to forgive is divine. And truly, it is part of the human condition that all of us, every single one of us, are sinners. And every single one of us falls short of God's wonderful glory. But it is in God's divine nature to forgive, to forget our sins, to remember them no more, to turn His face away from our iniquity and lift the burden of sin upon our shoulders and place it upon His own sons. To be forgiven we have but to confess to repent, to turn to God and ask Him for His forgiveness. So friends, let us take a moment and to do that together, confessing our sins, first in quiet meditation in our hearts and to God alone, and then together as it is printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. And now together, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledge my sin to you, and I do not cover up my iniquity. I confess to you and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. I will offer my prayers to you, for you are my hiding place. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will be glad in you, my Lord, for you are my righteousness and my peace. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. The wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Blessed be the name of our God. We're now going to stand and sing hymn number 361, How Firm a Foundation.
Please be seated. Our scripture passage today is from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verses 11 to 18. Before we read that, let us pause for a moment in prayer. Good and wonderful Father, Lord, we thank you that you have not left us as orphans. Lord, abandoned and lost uh, without any guidance for our way here upon earth. But Lord, instead, you have given us your word. Lord, revealed through the prophets and the apostles and written down in Holy Scripture to give to us. Lord, we can understand none of these things written here without the same spirit that inspired these words to inspire us now. So, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit move among us in our hearts and minds, that we may hear, that we may read, and that we may understand. Lord, bless this holy reading of your holy word, and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 11 to 18. Listen now to the word of the Lord. Again, I saw that under the sun, the race is not to the swift, nor battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to the intelligent, nor favor to those with knowledge, but time and chance happen to them all. For man does not know his time, like fish that are taken in an evil net and like birds that are caught in a snare. So the children of man are snared at an evil time when it suddenly falls upon them. I have also seen this example of wisdom under the sun, and it seemed great to me. There was a little city with few men in it, and a great king came against it and besieged it, building great siege works against it. But there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no one remembered that poor man. But I say that wisdom is better than might, though the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. The words of the wise and quiet are better than the shouting of a ruler among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So you probably noticed that out there in life, there are some people that seem to be luckier than everybody else. I think we've all seen them. We come across people that seem to just have good genes, you know, and didn't do anything to earn it. They just have better genes than everybody else. There's people that are born to some really privileged families. And there's some that just seem to always do, do us right. They always seem to be in the right place in the right time and just live under some favored sign. I don't know what it is. Born under a good star. We've seen these people, right? They're really annoying. Gosh, so annoying. One of the luckiest people I've ever heard of was a woman named Joan Ginther. She was a school teacher from Texas. And she won the lottery not once. Not twice, not three times, but four times. And I'm not talking about like a little scratch card win $5. All of the jackpots were at least $2 million. And she won it four times. I mean, that just, it's just not fair. How does that happen? How does one person win the lottery four times? It's ah, so frustrating hear about that somebody that lucky and when we think about luck and and fortune and how powerful it is it seems apparent that luck seems to win out every time over hard work and good sense hard work and good sense versus luck and fortune luck and fortune seem to win every time i'll give you another example 2013 auburn versus georgia 
in a football game. Georgia's winning by one point. We're in the last minute of the game. Auburn's on their own 30-yard line. They've got forever to go. Fourth and like 20 or 30. All right, the quarterback for Auburn, just, he just heaves up this desperation throw. And right there under the ball, two Georgia defenders. The Auburn receiver's like about five yards behind him. He didn't have a shot at the ball. All they have to do is let the ball hit him in the chest and fall, and they win. Well, both the Georgia players try to get the ball, and the ball bounces up in the air over their heads, and it into the arms of the waiting Auburn receiver, who was just as surprised as anybody that the ball finally landed in his hands, and he runs into the touchdown. Auburn wins. Now, just in case you think that was just a fluke, the very next week, Iron Bowl, Auburn versus Alabama. Game is tied, a few seconds left. Alabama is going to kick a, try to kick a game-winning field goal. It's a long one, and they kick it. The ball is short, and there's an Auburn player waiting in the end zone. He catches it and runs through everybody and 110 yards to score a game-winning touchdown. And if that wasn't bad enough, they got to play Missouri in the SEC championship, who Carolina had beaten that year, by the way, and we should have been, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, sometimes it is better to be lucky than to be good. Sometimes it works a lot better to be lucky and good, and luck and fortune can seem to make an absolute and total mockery of all of our work and all of our effort. In other words, life is unfair. Life is unfair. It can be extremely unfair. And I'm not just moaning here, okay? The Bible agrees with me. Today I read you a passage, the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. The riches are not to the intelligent. Time and chance happen to them all. In other words, the best team doesn't always win. Effort, hard work, wisdom, planning, as good as you can make them, they don't always win out. And this is true in every area of life. It's true in sports. It's true in business. It's true in life in general. And we've all experienced it. We've all seen it happen to us firsthand. Maybe we've been passed over for a promotion for somebody who you know didn't work as hard as you and hadn't been with the company but half the time that you've been with them. We've seen those people that make absolutely no effort at being healthy. And here we are just chugging away on the, the elliptical bikes and watching what we eat. And he's healthier than we are. He's just sitting on the couch eating bonbons and he looks like an Adonis. We've seen people with absolutely no management skills, no idea how to run a business, do everything wrong you could possibly do and somehow manage to make millions of dollars. And we've seen the, the meanest, most despicable person in our friend group be the one that's the most liked and the most popular. It's a universal theme. That life isn't fair. That fortune comes and fortune goes and you don't know where it's going to strike next. There was a, a musical piece written by a composer named Carl Orff. It's called Carmina Burana. And he based his music on uh, these medieval poems written in the 13th century by, uh, by a bunch of monks. And one of the most popular songs is called O Fortuna. I'm not going to sing it for you, but I promise you'd recognize it. But the English translation of O Fortuna goes like this. O fortune, like the moon, you are changeable, ever waxing, ever waning. Hateful life first oppresses, then soothes as fancy takes it. Poverty and power, it melts them like ice. In other words, life is unfair. Success can fall on the unworthy, and the next minute disaster falls on the worthy. And we can also do everything right. Do everything the exact way we're supposed to do it. And it still comes out wrong. 
kind of makes a mockery of human effort. I mean, at some point we're going to say, why am I bother trying? I mean, why am I bother making the effort when all of my work can get blown away in just one wind of fortune? And we, and we think that way, it'll easily lead us to a place that's called resignation. Resignation where we just shrug our shoulders and be like, why? Why do I care? I mean, why do I even bother? What, what does it matter what I do? Just whatever. I'm going to show up and let the chips fall where they may. See, the race is not to the swift, nor battle to the strong, nor riches to the intelligent, but... Time and chance happen to them all. Our good planning and our hard work can amount to nothing. And that's what Solomon means by including wisdom in this. That's what our wisdom is. Our wisdom is is good planning and, and, and good strategy. And working smart. Working with intelligence. All of that wisdom can come to nothing. But, but. Solomon says, it is still good to be wise. Even though that that wise man who saved the city is forgotten, even though nobody gives honor to that wise man, even though wisdom is better than might, it's still better than weapons. And it's still good to be wise. So how, how can Solomon justify this? After he's just told us that fortune comes wherever it will go, And then facing off against fortune, fortune wins every time. You put fortune and luck in one corner, and you put wisdom and planning and hard work in the other corner. Fortune wins every time. So why try? Why is it, Solomon says, it is still better to be wise? Well, in practical terms, the effort still makes sense. Right? Hard work and planning always will increase your chances of success. Even though it might come down to fortune, hard work and good planning always will increase your chances of success. Is it a guarantee? Absolutely not. And it can make you frustrated the harder you work and the more you plan and the more you don't see any fruit for your labor, but it still increases your chance of success. Let me give you another football story here. Alabama, number one, comes into williams Bryce Stadium. No chance Carolina can win, right? Steve Spurrier, before the game in his speech, he tells his players, let's give fate a chance. And he was acknowledging all the hard work and all the effort aren't going to guarantee we win, and it might come down just to a lucky bounce of the ball. He says, but let's give it a chance. Let's do everything we can do so if it comes down to fortune that we are in a position to take advantage of it. So hard work and wisdom are practically beneficial. But there's another reason we should seek wisdom. And there's another reason we should work hard. And there's another we- reason we should seek to be virtuous men and women. And that reason is you're supposed to. That is what you're supposed to do. Or I can put it to you like this. Wisdom and effort may not guarantee or always lead to success. But who exactly told you that you were put on this earth to be successful? Who put that idea into your head that we were put on this earth to be successful? I mean, success as the world measures it. Success by the world's standards of fame and power and wealth. Who told you that? I mean, is that why we're here? Is that why God made us? Is there anywhere written here in the Bible that God put us here for you to be famous? Is it written down anywhere here that that God put you on this earth to be rich? Is there a passage, did one of the prophets say that he put you here to be powerful? Did, Did Paul ever write down that the reason why God put you on here on earth is so you can have more than everyone else or you can climb high on the social or the corporate ladder? Did Jesus ever make a promise to you that you were going to have the nicest house or the prettiest family or the greatest body or the, or the best clothes than anybody else you knew? I haven't found it. If you know of a place in there where it's written, please let me know. But as far as I know, that's not why we're here. 
That's not why God has put us here on this earth is to be successful by the standards of the world. And maybe, maybe fickle, the fortune is so fickle so that we always remember that. Fortune comes and fortune goes so that we will always remember that worldly success is not our success. And worldly success and fortune and good luck are not what we base our life and faith upon. The Christian theologian St. Augustine said this about 1,500 years ago. He says, God lets fortune go to everyone, though he distributes it in unfair amounts. But blessing comes only to the children of God. So God lets fortune go to everyone, though he gives it in unfair amounts, but blessing comes only to the children of God. And friends, we're not here for fortune. We're here for blessing. We're here to be blessed by our God. We're not here for success as the world measures success. We're here for success as God measures success. And the way God measures success is by faith. God measures our success by the measure of our faith. And our success by faith is not in the money earned, or it's not in the fame amassed, it's not in the power gathered. It's how much you trusted the Lord. It's how much you trusted God in your daily life. And in the up and down of fortune, God's given us a great way to trust Him. He's given us a fantastic way to trust Him. That we can work hard, that we can seek wisdom, that we can do what is righteous and virtuous and still not come out on top. Or or, or even better, we fail completely at it. But then we can get up do it again the next morning. Not because of our success, but because we believe. And now we're getting up and still working hard and still seeking wisdom and still seeking God and still striving to be righteous is our way of saying, God, I don't know why you have me doing this, but I trust that this is good. I trust that what I am doing here and being obedient to you is building your kingdom. And this is for your glory. That's why we're here. We're here to trust God. We're here to learn faith in Jesus Christ. Now, I can't make sense of fortune. Don't ask me. I can't make sense... Of luck, okay? Why some people win the lottery four times and most of us can play our whole life and not win it once? I don't know. Why can some people get along in life without uh, even trying? I don't know. Why do some people die young despite their best efforts while others are healthy despite no effort? I don't know. Why is Auburn so lucky in football? Who knows? Who knows? It doesn't make any sense. It's beyond me. Okay, fortune isn't fair. Just got to accept that. Fortune is not fair. It's beyond my control, and it's beyond your control. But it's not beyond God's control. And if he lets fortune just go like this, seemingly willy-nilly, And there's got to be a good reason for it. But for now, the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. And riches are not to the intelligent. But time and chance happen to us all. And we don't control time and chance. But you know what? Time and chance don't control you either. 
You control your effort. You control whether or not you will seek wisdom or folly. You control whether you will live your life in sin or righteousness. You control who you will follow. You control who you will trust. And this is the business of the children of man. Because if it comes to the very end, you're not going to be judged on how successful you were by the world's standards. You will be judged by how much you trusted God, how much you loved Him, and how much you loved each other. And that, that is something we can control. We can choose to have faith in God. We can choose to have faith in our Savior, and we can choose to have faith in in His promise. Does that mean we're going to win the lottery? No, it does not. In fact, you can live a life of great faith as well as a life of great poverty. It's happened before. Being faithful doesn't mean that you will be fortunate. But it does mean you will be blessed. And the blessing of God is something that even the most fortunate people in the world will one day come to envy. To God be all the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, will you pray with me? Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. Father, we know that all things are in your hand. Lord, not only all time and all space, Lord, but the fate of every single one of us and every creature living on this earth, Lord, within your hands. We know, Lord, that your lordship rises above all fortune, all luck, all fate, Lord, all the, the seeming changing of the world, Lord. And while some people seem to have it all, while others seem to suffer disproportionately. And Lord, we don't understand any of these things, Lord, and we know it is beyond us. But Father, we strive to trust you all the same. For we know that you are a God that rises above these things and, th and all things and through all things, Lord. And it is your hand that leads us. It is your hand that guides us. So Father, I pray that you give us hearts that trust you more and more every single day. I pray, Lord, that you give us hearts that trust you when fortune smiles upon us and all life is happiness and joy. I pray, Lord, that we would trust you when fortune seems to frown down upon us and life is pain and heartache and grief. Through all seasons, through all places. Father, help us to trust you. Lord, we cry out as that man did cry out to Christ long ago, saying, Lord, we believe. Help my unbelief. But Father, we trust you even with this. Father, we trust you with our nation and our leaders and pray that you would bless them direct them and guide them. We trust you, Lord, with our communities and pray, Lord, that you would guard them and walk with them and all peoples, Lord, in this county, in this city, in this state. Lord, we trust you with our families and pray that you would watch over them and guard them in body and mind and spirit. Father, protecting us, Lord, from all the attacks of the evil one, from all harm that might be done to us. Father, we trust you with our souls, and we give them completely to you, Lord, and to your Son, our Savior, Christ Jesus. Father, we trust you with all those that are sick in need of healing. We lift up to you Wanda and Caroline and Pat and Tim and Tommy, and pray your healing strength and power be upon them. We trust you, Lord, with all those who grieve. We lift up to you in particular the Burrell family and pray uh, comfort and grace and peace be upon their hearts today. Father, we trust you with our very lives, with our minds and our souls. And we lift up all these prayers in the name of your Son who taught us to pray together, saying, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we don't always control how fortune may bless us with wealth, but we do control what we do with it. And what God asks of us is that we give back to Him a small portion of the great abundance that He has blessed us all with, and to use this abundance to the work of His kingdom here on earth. If you would like to give to the work of Cherokee Presbyterian, there are many ways that you can give. Uh, If you're here in person, we have offering plates on either side of the doors as you leave the sanctuary. But you can also give through Venmo, PayPal, ACH Bank Draft, or through the United States Postal Service. And we thank you for all the ways that you support the kingdom of God here at Cherokee Presbyterian. And now to respond in thanksgiving to all that God has given us, let us stand and sing together our offertory response. Let us pray. Lord, we come and we bring our gifts to you and ask that they be used for your glory. Father, we pray that you would receive these and bless both the gift and the giver, and all that we bring to you today will be used for the spread of your wonderful kingdom until Christ comes again to claim it whole. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we're going to continue standing and say what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. And you can find those words printed in your bulletin. Friends, what is it you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are going to remain standing and sing Blessed Be Your Name. (laughs) 